particularly on the ladies' side. Out of the national competition just a couple of weeks ago, Debbie Thomas, Karen Kadavy, and Jill Trenary presented a very strong Olympic team. We've asked our Olympic and world champion, Scott Hamilton, to come and join us here for a little bit of a preview of the Olympic Games in Calgary and the upcoming world championships in Budapest. And Scott, Debbie Thomas won the world championship in 1986. East German Katarina Witt won it a year ago. What can Debbie do this time to win the gold at Calgary? Well, it always seems that when Debbie and Katarina go head to head, it's always very close. Debbie usually has a lead coming out of the compulsories in the short program, but Katarina seems to catch up and take her in the long program. Debbie has never beaten Katarina in a long program, even when she won her world championship in 86. But Debbie's been working with different choreographers. She's a lot stronger in the artistic impression. It might just be enough for her to take the gold in Calgary. Well, Katarina Vitt always presents a strong artistic impression. She did so again last month at the European Championships in Prague. Let's watch now her winning performance there. 22-year-old Katarina Witt with her longtime coach, Jutta Muller, and about to begin her long program, a performance that would win her her sixth consecutive European title, matching the record held by the legendary Sonja Henny. Katarina Witt, Niemiecka Demokratyczka Republika, Germany, Democratic Republic. And this performance was really important for Katarina because this performance was held after the United States National Championships took place, and Katarina knows that Debbie Thomas successfully regained her title. skating to the music of Carmen. In this section, an excerpt from the ballet version of Carmen. And this is the same routine that she will be doing in Calgary at the Winter Olympics.
Katerina Witt with her dramatic interpretation of the death scene in Carmen, concluding her long program at these European Championships in Prague. Well, Scott, what did you think of Katerina's performance? I really liked it. I thought the changes she made this year are really good. I've liked everything she's done in the past, but I think she looks really good this year. Interesting that she's skating to the music of Carmen, so is Debbie Thomas. Mm -hmm. Now, they each claim not to have known the other was going to do that until actually the programs were prepared. Will it make any difference at the Calgary Olympics or in Budapest? Well, Carmen is definitely Carmen. Uh, the selections they're using are slightly different, and but it's like comparing apples and oranges. I mean, their strengths are a lot different, so it's not going to be the music as the factor. I think it's going to be who skates the best. Well, and don't count out Trenary and Kadevi, the other two Americans who will be there competing in Calgary. We'll be back with a preview look at the men's competition in Calgary and in Budapest when we return with more on CBS Sports Saturday. Scott Hamilton and Scott now let's take a look at the men's competition in Calgary and of course the world championships to follow in March we've got three world champions first time ever in Olympic history this has happened you've got the American hope Brian Boitano Brian Orser from Canada Alexander Fedeev of the Soviet Union they've all won world titles all going for the gold is there a clear favorite here well, I, I'd have to say no. I mean, if you look at their competitive records, you'll see that they're all very capable of beating one another. Uh, and they've all had weak national championships. Brian Orser from Canada defended his national title by falling twice in his long program. Brian Boitano, the United States, he had a little trouble in his long program as, as well. It was very lackluster and very sloppy. And the way that Alexander Fedeev won his world title in 1985, you'd have to consider him a dark horse contender for the Olympic gold. Well, Scott Hamilton knows whereof he speaks. He defeated all three of these skaters back in 1984 to win the gold at Sarajevo. Well, last month in Prague, Fedea won yet another European championship. Let's take a look at his winning performance. Scott, Fedea uh, placed first in all portions of the competition, the figures, the short program, and here on the long program. Is he getting enough of a push from his rivals here to set himself up for competition in the Olympics. Well, I think most of his rivals come from the Soviet Union. He's clearly the Soviet champion. There's a lot of kids coming up behind him that are going to be good in the future, but it's still his time. Oh. A bad fall on a triple axle. again favoring the Ukrainian folk music for his program and this will be the same program he will skate in Calgary.
Alexander Fedeyev of the Soviet Union winning his third European title. And now ready to take on Boitano and Orser in Calgary. Alexander Fedeyev. Well, Scott, talk about a packed program. That was certainly one presented by Alexander Fedeyev. I'm just trying to think of what he didn't do in that program. I think it's a, like a list of technical terms. If you were to call everything in that program, there wouldn't be anything left. It hasn't been invented yet. But you never know who's going to show up with Alexander. Either it can be the most brilliant technical display of fireworks, or he can make a lot of mistakes. Will we see a quadruple jump in this competition coming up in Calgary? Well, I think there's a, a few people that can do it. Uh, Brian Boitano, I think, should avoid it. I think he should really focus on putting the pressure on Brian Orser. And with Alexander Fedeyev, with so much attention being on the two Brians, he might just need it to get the attention of the judges. Well, coming up, we're going to take a look at the dance competition, and that'll give us an opportunity to show you the European winning performance by Bestem Yanova and Bukin when we return with more here on CBS Sports Saturday get upcoming here we will have a report from the twin 125s from daytona beach florida where tomorrow we'll bring you the daytona 500 right now let's continue with our preview of the calgary olympic figure skating competition and indeed of the world championships to follow in march scott hamilton now uh, we've got a chance to discuss the ice dance competition if there is such a thing bestem yanova and bukin seem to have it all to themselves they are the three-time world champions from the soviet union can anybody beat them well, you know, when you're looking at three straight world titles, uh, they haven't been beaten since 1984. There's a little thing called momentum that might just carry into Calgary. They're going to be really tough to beat. There's maybe one Soviet team that could edge them out, but they are a real dark horse. Um, I look for Besmian and Bukin to win the gold in Calgary and, and then go on and defend the world title. Well, they certainly put on a very striking and exotic performance in winning the recent European Figure Skating Championships in Prague. Let's take a look at their winning performance. The three-time world champion dance team from the Soviet Union, Natalia Bestemyanova and Andrei Bukin, winning their fifth European title with this upcoming performance in Prague. They've always shown dramatics and energy and versatility in their dance and their approach. But here is a whole new look. remind us a little bit more of the program of a couple of years back when they skated to Rachmaninoff. Quite a contrast last year when they went to the Broadway music of Cabaret Scott. Well, it's so important to show versatility in ice dance because if you give the judges the same thing every year, pretty soon it'll weaken in their eyes and a new champion can come in.
exotic costuming and exotic performance by Vestam Yanova and Bukin. Again, the European champions Natalia heading for the gold in Calgary. Andrei Bukin, Soviet Ski Slavs. Vestam Yanova and Bukin. And Scott, I really liked their performance. What was your impression? Well, I liked it as well. It has gotten mixed reviews in the skating community, but you have to be versatile. You have to take chances choreographically. Otherwise, you won't be successful in the ice dance competition. Well, the Soviets will also be favored to win the pairs competition. Gordieva and Grinkov there. Anybody else in that category? <laughs> well, it just seems like whenever the Soviet Union puts a man and a woman on the ice at the same time, they're favored to win a world title in either the dance or the pairs. But we do have a very strong pair team in Jill Watson and Peter Oppegard. And the Carruthers won a silver by surprise in Sarajevo, so who knows, maybe Jill and Peter could do really well in Calgary. Well, we'll be watching for sure. And Scott, we thank you for joining us here. We look forward to seeing you in Budapest for our coverage of the World Figure Skating Championships. In fact, we'll be on in prime time with our opening show on Saturday, March 26th. Still to come.